business you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Welcome to All About Android, episode 87, recorded on Tuesday, November 27th, 2012. We are your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Ron Richards, and you, you've graduated up to the big chair. I guess so. I'm I, I just I just sat down. Yeah, there you go. You nice. Know, she's nice and comfy, but I don't get the big throne. <laughs> and I'm still Father Robert Bowser, or Father <laughs> Not Eileen. <laughs> oh, oh, that just that hurts. Does. Oh, hurts. Oh, we miss Eileen terribly. Although I've gotten over it already. It, oh, she's, yeah. She's just yeah, that girl that that girl that lives in L.A. Whatever. Somebody I used to know. We used yeah. to hang out. If you if you've been following her Twitter feed, you've seen a little bit of kind of the stuff that she's doing now. Yeah. It's so exciting. Little Miss so cool. Google, whatever. <laughs> I know, but that studio looks so cool. It looks really There's cool. an LA Times yeah, article yeah, about yeah. the studio that she's working in. Yeah. You have to check it out, search it out, and and uh, find it. I think it was posted in the last last uh, few days, and yeah. it's uh, really cool. She's working in a very cool facility. It's very lucky, very lucky. But it's good to be back. I'm sorry I missed last week. That's okay. Thanksgiving Forgive you. travel got in the way. I understand sort of thing, Turkey. So. Turkey has that effect on people. It does. It does. Well, it was pre-Turkey, but still, it was the anticipation of Turkey. It was, yeah, it was yeah. the excitement yeah. of Turkey exactly. ahead of ahead of the actual event. Yeah, it, it shrouds your judgment. <laughs> so, no, it's it's all good. Um, totally understand. Uh, this week, we're going to be discussing, among other things, the Nexus Four, how it was on sale today, and was kind of an interesting ordeal for many. Uh, the Android engagement paradox, which sounds kind of you know a little more wacky than it actually is but it's good discussion december is remembered once again and so much more but let's dive right into the news so as mentioned the the hotly anticipated nexus 4 and i gotta admit as i'm prepping for the show and reading our news and going over stuff i just i can't help but think about the previous nexus phones and back when i stood in the line of six people at best buy to buy a nexus s um, and we're making me and Zach from Revision Three are making jokes about how there was no line, and yet now Nexus Four people are having a hard time buying it due to the overwhelming demand and flooding the servers and basically shutting down the Google Play Store. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Crazy indeed. So uh, basically, the uh, the Nexus Four went back on sale, but then traffic was so large that it was un- that it, it it made people unable to actually complete their purchase. So you can get to the site, but actually going through the payment purchase uh, process was halted due to the uh, overwhelming traffic to the websites. Um, they had. Uh, told everyone that it was going to be live at noon Pacific, and then within a minute, it appeared to be out of stock, <laughs> which is just crazy. And then um, as people who did see it in stock, they got this error message that, you see that the folks watching the video can see on screen. Due to high demand, your order could not be processed. Please try again later. Um, Google was saying that the device is not sold out, that it was a problem with the website and the overwhelming traffic, and that um, Nexus 4, uh, people who want to buy it should try coming back later because they'll sort out these problems. Um, really got to wonder when Google has site capacity problems. That's the strange <laughs> That's thing the, here. I, like I, the, I totally and completely they have agree. To, thousands of miles of dark fiber and servers hidden in bunkers in Omaha and things like that. You wouldn't think that this would happen. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I guess it's just a sign because I guess this is a little bit different. Well, no, it's not. It, capacity is capacity. Yep. But this is, you know, them taking the sales of devices and that whole process, something that I don't really understand myself. Well, but they're taking that and, and, and it's kind of new to them. So well, yeah, and, and I, I have to e- imagine that's part of it. E-commerce. At, but th- what, what I find fascinating is that it's 2012. Like, I, I can understand this problem Executing e- e- an e- a successful e-commerce site, what you've got to do is you've got to have a secure connection. You've got to gather the customer data. You've got to do the credit card processing. You've got to check with inventory to make sure it's in stock. When someone starts the payment process, you need to say, okay, one of those that is in stock is this person's until it completes or they abandon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's very, very complicated. But if this was ni- if this was 1999 or, t- or tw- 2001, 2002, I could understand. But kind of figure this out, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, and not to mention, I mean – it's Google, yeah. one of the largest right. companies. You, you would think that if they really truly saw this as a weakness on their side, 
that they would, you know, have some minds that they could bring in. And I'm sure that's they've done that, but it hasn't been very effective. Yeah. But Google's doing something that a lot of other online vendors aren't doing, and that is they're tying into a lot of different modules. So sure. they've got their uh, verification module that hands out those certificates. They've got the credit card processor. Which is Google Wallet. The, yeah. Which is Google Wallet. They've got right. the integration into your Google account. So yep. every time you, you hit a Google server, it's looking back at all of your activity. And so this might actually be a case of they've got a really good infrastructure, but because their system is so interconnected, they it choked itself. Well, which is which mm. is shock. I mean, I've never heard of a large system, a, a, a sequence of large systems having a hard time playing together. Like that is something that that is commonly ha is a big problem. And right. so it's clear that that when we often joke about Google with the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. In this case, the left hand can't use the right hand effectively to you know to execute on the the what they want and their their vision yeah. of use Google Wallet for payment processing, use Google uh, Google Plus. Uh, accounts for account management stuff. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a little fascinating. I mean, the the big problem I think for Google, at least right now, in in the month, the month less than a month uh, leading up to Christmas, is the fact that because this is the second time that this device has gone on sale and experienced the same kind of issues yep. the second time. Although I am seeing a lot more people today as the day progresses go, okay, yay, I finally got it. Yeah, Excellent. well, I'm sure so they've got that's all hands good. It's funny, I can but, get it right now. Yeah, just, yeah. Chad just. Bought like one right I now. just pretty much bought one. Buy another one. <laughs> Excellent. So you know, maybe Chad, as the days Chad progress, they've kind Nexus of figured this. Out. Thanks, Chad. If you can <laughs> buy me one, that would be Nexus great. Fours. You want one? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you, you get a phone, and you, you get, get a phone, phone and you get a phone. Wow, I was wondering if I was <laughs> yeah. going to get this phone. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. Yeah. That's what super producers do. Yeah, you, you're you're awesome. We're, we're so happy to have you on this. Uh, Chad is making it rain, Android. No, but I mean, but yeah, it's it's a critical time right now, and they knew that. You know, the the holiday season is important to all manufacturers yep. of devices so it's not like they didn't know that this is a critical time yep. but this is the second time that the experience has been painful for a lot of people and yep. actually the true fans of the platform are experiencing yep. experiencing pain a lot well, of them but, have just decided you know what screw it this sucks i don't want to sit here trying to do this over and over and beating my head against the wall yep. i'm just going to get the s3 and or, or whatever well, they yeah decide. i mean that, that, that's what happened that's customer service i mean you were every yeah. time you every time you uh, make it hard for someone to complete a purchase they run the risk of going to buy something else. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's definitely something. I don't know whether the natural the natural reaction is like, well, I can't buy this. So I'm going to go buy something else right now, or I'll try back later. Mm -hmm. um, but what I think what I think is fascinating about this is just the change in direction in terms of the demand. Is that yeah. you know they, they've been running. I don't know if you noticed, but they've been running hella uh, banner ads across the web. I mean, I'm seeing Nexus, and maybe because I'm I'm targeted for it, so I see it more. Right. But you're seeing that I'm seeing so. it in, in magazines, like entertain every issue of Entertainment Weekly since the Nexus 10 came out. Is that an ad for it? Mm -hmm. um, so they're they're really making the full court press on the consumer side, and clearly the the interest is there. You know, so I mean, I don't know whether it's all people like us or people who actually want the phone. You know, like yeah. the, you know the normal. My, my favorite part about that story is last week when I was uh, prepping for this week in enterprise tech, I was looking up all the Microsoft stories, specifically looking at Windows 8 and Windows Mobile, and every single story had a Nexus banner on it. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah, they're, they're making a full court press, which again, that sort of makes you ask. If you're going to advertise and you're going to try to drum up this enthusiasm, then why would you not make sure that your right. back-end servers yeah. are up to the task? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And does. the thing is, it's not even like we don't have the technology to test this. There are load load testing and like – and. I mean, you know, scripts and things like that you can run to like, okay, we're going to dial it up to, uh, you know, 10,000 people, 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can test this. I, I, don't, I wonder how much of this was them just rushing to the finish line. And I wonder how chaotic it was at, at down in Mountain View, you know, trying to fix this. Like, yeah. why is this a problem? Cordy Anonymous makes a, a really good point. And this is actually what I was trying to get to earlier. And that is uh, the Google doesn't operate like a particular online vendor. They have separated out their different entities from the plus from the wallet because it's more secure. Yeah. But as a result, it means it, it makes it much more, there's much more overhead for them to actually process something as simple as a payment. Right. Uh, so, you know, on one hand, yeah, it's, it's kind of a bummer that this happened, but it also means my data is more secure. If one of these systems gets hacked, it's not going to expose all of my information. Yeah. Uh, so I'd, I'd wait a little longer for a phone. Yeah. 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 So, but now, of course, no problem on the internet is not um, is un is not unsolvable by the by the geeks. And sure enough, as this problem was happening, a, a workaround around some of the problems folks were having in uh, the checkout process was revealed. Um, this is interesting in that uh, the proceed button in the payment flow 
um, w- which typically, you know, there's a lot of UI suggestions and graying out a button um, makes you realize that the button isn't clickable. Like, oh, you can't click that. Right. In reality, that that proceed button was just grayed out visually and yet it could still be clicked. And so folks figured out that if you just brute force, just keep clicking on it, eventually it will go through and eventually you'll be able to. And people even wrote scripts that let you yeah. just, you know, kind of tab you could, you to could that tab button. You over and just to it enter, and enter, just enter, hold enter. down return. And, and so <laughs> if, you, yeah, if, you were, uh, if you were tenacious enough, you were, you'd be able to get through some of the problems through brute force and be able to do that. I'm sure they're going to fix that at some point because that is just sloppy coding um, on their end. But uh, yeah, interesting to see how, how, how the, the geeks figured it so out. So somebody in the, yeah. in the uh, comments on this article, actually puts Google, the only company where nerds write scripts to check out properly uh, by automating a button press. That's Roberto <laughs> Guillento. That actually happened at Google I.O. You know how it sells out so quickly. Yep. Um, some people figured out that the header for the confirmation page mm-hmm. only changed date. And if you were logged into your Google account, you could go straight to the confirmation page and hit buy. Oh, nice. And so, yeah, you just change it from 2011 to 2012, somewhere in that string, and, and boom, you went. So, there is. I, I kind of like that. That's part of that yeah. geek culture of if, if everything's you, if hackable. You th- if you figure it out, if you're smart enough, oh. yeah, you'll get an advantage. Now, now, wait a minute. Okay, but let's back up here. So when you hit proceed, you're sending uh, something to their servers, right? Correct. Yep. Could this be this the problem? <laughs> I mean, seriously, if everybody's because if everybody's getting there, <laughs> it could be related to it. Yeah, yeah. They're like, wait a minute, I can't get through because the server's getting hit. But no, actually, that's you. It's you. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Stop I mean, refreshing. I just hope. Ultimately, obviously, we all hope that Google kind of figures this out because it would be it would be great for folks that want to. Uh, propel their their you know cool initiatives like this uh, into the next level uh, to be able to do so without pain and torment because that stuff leaves a scar. <laughs> it's hard to forget that. But stuff it's the a next happy time scar. Around. It's what's that? It's a happy scar. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a scar on jelly bean. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's worth it. I don't know. <laughs> um, there was let's see here in the wake of Black Friday. Of course, Black Friday happened uh, last Friday, and then you know Cyber Monday actually was yesterday. Supposedly it did like really awesome or something. It was, it's breaking, yeah, every, everyone's breaking records. Cool. But yeah. IBM released a Black Friday report detailing, among other things, the ways that. Uh, that deals were shopped online and some interesting takeaway points from this that I think we can talk about a little bit. 24% of online sales were from mobile devices. So people buying from their phones. From from their mobile device, phone, tablet, yeah. whatever. 13% of that uh, came from phones. Of that 13%, iOS represents 67%, Android the remaining 33%. Uh, the remaining 11% came from tablets. Interesting. Uh, and iPad represents 88% of that. With Android at twelve percent now, obviously in this in this case, iOS dominates these figures. But Comscore data shows from November twelfth that there are sixty plus million Android users to iOS's forty plus million and uh, million users. So obviously, uh, much more on the Android side. But the ratio for how engaged iOS users are with shopping on their phones versus Android users has actually widened over the two years. Two years ago, iOS ruled Android two to one, and now it's three to one. So why is iOS so much stronger in things like browsing and shopping when you take a look at kind of these these statistics together? Well, that's really interesting because I, I, I'm curious. What is Android not doing? Yeah, I mean, well, uh, well, so are Android users also mainly on computers? I right. Mean, like, is, is, it, is it a user or is it is it a user's is thing it a, is it a, or is it an demogra- experience? Is it thing? is it a demographic thing where Android users are more typically ones to also be on computers, where iOS users might not be on computers as much? I don't know. I'm just I'm shooting you know shooting from the hip. Um, also, do they specify is it purchasing via web based browser based uh, e commerce points or purchasing via apps? I think it's both. I think it's just okay. mobile. My my purchases. guess would, would be is that I would imagine there's probably more retail apps available on the iOS platform than there are on the Android platform because everybody's like, oh, I gotta have an iPhone app, you know. So like, does J Crew right. have a does J Crew have an iPhone app? And, yeah, and do they yeah, have an I Android know. app? You know, like I, I don't know if you shop at J Crew. The problem right. is that these, I mean these are really empty statistics. Yeah. Because there's so many different answers you can throw at this that are just mm-hmm. live. You could say, oh well. People who own iOS devices, they have more money, and so therefore they'd be shopping more often. Or you might say, well, people who own Android devices, they're cheap, and so if they're cheap, they're not shopping at all. But what it really comes down to is this is a specific subset of numbers that shows that we've got more traffic from iOS devices, but not necessarily that 
iOS users buy more stuff than Android users. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I mean, because we're going to yeah, parse this, it carefully. This doesn't well, take into account that any sort of discount. Online. So right. I'm assuming yeah. that there's some sort of some sort of conversion that's happening. The the, the, the purchase is happening. Right. Well, here, well, here, let's let's informal poll. We're all Android users. Do you I shop on your phone? Uh, yes, I do. I do not. Very little. Yep. I, I actively do not. I will go to the computer to, to, to shop for some reason. Um, I shop on the phone. I wouldn't say that's the only place that I shop, no, but I but, have, you know, I have a no, few like, apps I that I check. shop that, on the phone. That if something comes up, yeah, I'll, I'll do it there. I will say uh. it's never quite as easy or as painless as I would hope that it would be. Mm. And if I'm given the option or I have the time, you know, the time flexibility, yeah. I'll wait until later to do it on the desktop. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And I wonder if that's different. I wonder if on, on iOS... It's less of a pain point, the, you know. That's, or, that's kind are, of, the, are those users used to it? Are they more trained? Are they because they've got a couple of years ahead of us? Are they more comfortable with it? I don't. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the other the other side of this, like another possible, you know, there's like you said, there's a million different things you could throw at this, and none of them would be 100 percent right. But I think they all kind of create a a bigger kind of interesting picture. Um, you know, Android tends to be. Uh, some people would say a little, a little bit of like a, a, a gateway into smartphone versus, you know, from somebody who was just on a flip phone, like my dad, take my dad, for example, He's been on flip phone forever. And what is the, the Android device that he bought it was a Samsung Galaxy S3. Of course, that. he returned it two weeks later because it was too complicated for him. And he ended up getting a flip phone again. But I guarantee you, if my dad had stuck with it, he probably wouldn't be using it as a nope. smartphone. Nope. He'd be making calls and maybe sending an occasional text message. He wouldn't be using it the same way that we do. I've got mm -hmm. the exact same thing with my dad. He still has a Motorola Razor, the original Flip. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, you know, he, he looked at the Nexus 4. He said, okay, that's the phone I want to get. But as we're, just, as we're talking, he's saying, but I don't want data. And I'm trying to explain to Mo it's a smartphone. No, that's kind of the thing. Yeah. Kind of, you need data. And he's like, no, I'm, no, I'm not going to use it. That. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I think that's actually not uncommon where you have a lot of people who – they you can only buy smartphones now. If you want a flip phone, it's actually more expensive than to buy a right. smartphone. Yeah. I had but, this discussion with my mother today, and she went, you know, the phone that I have right now is that um, HTC Android. <laughs> and I went, uh, okay, um, I know the phone you have because I bought it with you. It's the Incredible 2. And then I was like, well, you should probably get the Galaxy S3, the Droid Razer Max HD, you know, like, like there's all these other things. She's like, well, yeah, but what about this, um, the Droid M? It's 50, it's only 50 bucks. And it was just like, you are a different user. I am talking to a different user than myself. Uh, the M would probably be great for uh, your mom. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, well, and it's a good, actually not a bad phone. It's a yeah, great phone. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's but definitely I'm, an eye opener. I'm, I'm, yeah. You know what I'm fascinated by is as we're talking about the, the regular users of the world and stuff like that, how many of them, like she 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 wanted, the, she has the HTC Android. <laughs> right. Like, do they understand that Android is the operating system that Samsung, HTC, all these, Motorola, all these have, or do they think that they're, they're each their own unique thing? The like, thing is, like, like specific, like I don't know what all users. My mother is smart enough to listen, when I'm like Android's the operating system. She's like, oh, oh okay. Yeah. It's just that's something that's not in her head. Like she right. knows what an operating system is. She knows that Samsung is a manufacturer of that device, and she knows that it's on Verizon, which is the carrier of, of all of it, right? But that's just not information that she cares about. So, right. so, so you know, me, uh, me saying you have, you know, and then even when I'm like, you have the Incredible Two, she's like. I get it. That's the name of the device that I'm using. Right. These are the other names. You know, I'm going to write down the names of these other devices. She gets it. She just doesn't care. Right. 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 No, yeah. that's a yeah. really good yeah, point. A, yeah. she, did she know, you know, what uh, the name of the operating system was on the yes. flip phone that she had before? Oh, uh, she may. Probably not. I would she guess. She may have maybe. known Symbian. She Maybe. You could ask her the and thing be like, is, oh, it's running Symbian. The thing is, is she, she, yeah, she probably wouldn't have told me that. But yeah. if I told her you're running Symbian, she would have been like, cool, I'll remember that for five seconds and then Okay, I'm done. yeah. I mean, it wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't matter. That wouldn't matter into the, in, the, in the grand scheme of why right. she owns that device. She owns it because it makes calls and, right. it may, and receives text messages from you. Exactly. Doesn't send me, I, I don't know your, your mom, actually, so I don't know this. But it's the case in my family. Right. I send text messages to them. I rarely ever, right. if ever, get any back they don't just don't use their devices like that so yeah. you know anyways interesting uh kind of questions brought about by this and there like you said there's no way to really pinpoint anything on this or really make any grand conclusions on it either um because you, you just don't have the full picture you never you rarely ever do all right 4.2.1 oh no <laughs> 
<laughs> bad. Oh, it's okay. Well, it's inevitable, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so we've got 4.2.1. Uh, uh, have any of you had issues with your upgrade to 4.2? I don't have it yet. I seem to have resolved my issues before the show started. So, <laughs> so we're looking at Android 4.2.1 coming out because there have been reports, spotty reports, of just very strange issues happening across different phones. Like, for example, we all have a Nexus. We all have a Galaxy Nexus. Yep. I had a major problem with my phone where uh, after I did the update, I went from a full day, maybe a day and a half of battery life, to 17 minutes from 100% to 0%. Wow. And there was some sort of exchange bug. I have exchange set up on my phone, and it would always be pushing the server. Yeah. Um, you had an issue with, what was it, some ap some applications wouldn't update? Well, yeah, I, had, I had an issue with my, basically with my account where I was getting, well, a lot of people might, I think a lot of people experienced the, the login issue over the Thanksgiving over the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Yeah, I did. Um, but I'm then, not on 4.2. So. But then after that, my apps just weren't updating. Like I was getting an error on, on updating, so I had to actually remove my Google my Google account and re-add it to the phone, and now they appear to be updating. It all happened live while we were on this before the show. So, right, right. Yeah. And I was looking at, I mean, the, the 4.2 update actually is quite good. I love the yep. fact that I've added swipe back in. That's one of the things I miss the most about moving from the S2, I, I, getting back to predictive uh, texting. That It's a big and, thing for me. And honestly, I think it works a little better than swipe did. Now, I haven't had swipe. I've actually used it a lot. I haven't had, yeah. I, I had swipe on my Galaxy Nexus S, and I didn't install it on here because I wanted to keep the stock for some reason and I think I was just too lazy to because the install on Swipe was annoying. You had to go to the website, you had to log in, you had to mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but from my memory of how Swipe worked about a year ago, I think this is superior. I think it's really yeah. I think it's really nice. I think the predictive the prediction is really good. The um the word prediction a, a, after you're swiping is is it's it's right there at the end of the word as opposed to somewhere else. Like I mm -hmm. think they, they Yeah, not, that actually comes in really handy really seeing handy. it right above yeah. where your finger yeah. is at yeah. that moment. So I'm 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 loving it. I think 4.2 is great. So I haven't had a, I I haven't experienced the battery issue though and and at the day I got the update I saw people tweeting and talking about, oh, I hope you don't have this battery issue that I'm having. And I was just like, oh, I hope I don't either. But I also do like the fact that finally I, I can swap my actual home screen yep. onto the side view. Yep. Now, one of the things about the 4.2 update has been that, uh, well, with these strange, unexplicable issues that certain people have been having, certain users have been experiencing, the 4.2.1 update supposedly should get rid of those. But... Here's the problem. By the time the 4.2.1 update comes out, most of the people who had had issues with 4.2 are going to have figured out the workarounds. Like you had to reset your phone. Yep. I had to delete my exchange account and bring them back in. So it's I'm not really exactly sure what they're doing uh, other than maybe making that happen in the background right. without you having to interact. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's going to fix those, though, for anybody who is late to getting that update. Like, I don't even have 4.2 at all. So probably the first one I'm going to get is going to be 4.2.1, 4 yeah. which fixes all those problems, and then I don't even have to experience so them. So what you're saying is we were your beta test. Yeah. Right. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. I'm fine with that. I appreciate that. Um, you know, one thing that I'm going to get when I get it on my phone, December, because uh, December's back. Yeah. Oh, thank uh, God so, December's back. Yeah, yes. Geez. <laughs> that that someone at Google's got to just like I've been in meetings where like this something stupid like that happens oh, yeah. and you're just like oh come on like we didn't really need this. Yeah, why you know. this happen yeah, yeah totally and uh, thankfully they got to it before December actually happened so good on you Google I was wondering if that was going to happen and you guys pulled it off with a few days to spare. is anyone going to leave their phone on four dot two just to find out what happens when you do get to December. <laughs> I'm sure it might turn going into. To, I'm sure someone's yeah, going. It might to, turn yeah. into a brick of gold. I heard. <laughs> it just freak out. Go you could January. sell it, buy a bunch of Nexus fours. Maybe that's what's going to cause the end of the world. Uh, well, then wait, don't do it. Wait, wait. We don't need oh, anyone doing that. Please. Google has foreknowledge. December 21st, that, that date yes. has to be eliminated <laughs> so we can continue on with the calendar. <laughs> now I understand. See, Google was saving our lives. We didn't even know it. <laughs> they're that good. Thank you, Google. They're maybe not so good at the online sales thing. No. But they're really good at saving people's <laughs> lives. Does it, I mean, when these start to pile up, does it make you wonder what's going on? I mean, first you've got the debacle with not being able to sell the phones that you're pimping out, and then you've you, you remove December from the calendar. Uh, it, no, you know, like the December from the calendar thing, I'm, I'm, you know, like, I don't know. I haven't looked into that much. I've just, I kind of dismissed it because I saw the, the Android haters making fun of it. Stuff like that. But I swear to God, I would not be surprised that that was just something as simple as like an unclosed quote right. or, you know, or somewhere in the code, just a dumb mistake that slipped through QA and reminds you that there are humans behind all of this. Mm -hmm. Because that's all it takes. I mean, I, I, the limited amount of coding I've done, I can't tell you how many times and how many hours I spent and banged my head on a table. I'm like, oh, I just have to close that bracket. 
and then it fi- and then it's fixed. So I bet you December was commented out or something like that. Yeah, right? I mean yeah, it, it yeah. wasn't absent from yeah. the entire OS. Yeah. It was in yeah. the People app. It was a very yeah. specific thing. Yeah. Like you're adding a person, yep. you're setting their birth date to December, and it won't let you right. do it. Yeah. So it wasn't like this grand thing that that I, I don't know how testing goes. I mean maybe it's that that detailed. It should be, I guess. Well, it should be. You're, but, supposed, to, you're supposed to test. You're supposed to have test. You know, for every application. Like, but just, it wouldn't be the yeah. kind of thing where you open up the calendar. You know, the calendar app, and you swipe, and there's no December there. You know, and so it'd be like, oh, well, duh, there's no December there, or we missed that. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I think you're right to a certain degree. Google, uh, as as much as I hate kind of admitting it sometimes, has a problem with kind of coming. Well, they they come up, they have great ideas and they have these great initiatives and everything, but sometimes the execution just isn't quite there. And if and if they just kind of hashed it out a little bit more before it got there. It would it would go a long way to cementing them as maybe having a little bit more of that that thought. You see, but but that's the, that's the product. that's the aspect that I like about it. It's kind of like an underdog. It's kind of scrappy. <laughs> it's like it's rough around the edges, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that works great for geeks. But yeah, I mean, I know, Google's yeah, right. trying to shed yeah. its beta image. I mean, right. that used to be the inside joke. Everything at Google is in beta except for search. Sure. Well, Android's no longer in beta. Android is a bona fide hit. It's a major platform. And you can't do things like this. Yeah. I mean, Apple Maps is one thing. That was a, an application integrated in the operating system that, that just wasn't designed very well. This was actually the OS. This was how the, the OS handled an app. That's ne- never supposed to be suspect. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it does make me wonder if they, they've gotten rid of that beta culture where, oh, we'll fix it when, uh, when people complain. Yeah. We'll fix it in post. Yeah. By the way, that's never a good idea. Don't don't ever uh, live your life in <laughs> fixing it in post. That can get you into a lot of trouble. It's kind of the same thing here. Um, all right, let's uh, jump right into hardware. So now that Eileen has moved on from the show, we can lift our bias against Canada and report on Android-related Canadian news. Thank so, you. I know, right? Cause Somebody had to say it. I, I mean, it got really tense in those meetings when she's just like, oh, Canada? No, that's not in the rundown. No, just, I'm just kidding. Eileen loves Canada. I'm just There's like, a lot of boot yeah. to say about Canada. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, those uh, Canadian Android um, enthusiasts uh, should be pretty excited at this news, that uh, uh, news coming out of the Nexus 4 that – uh, LTE is in the is there in the Nexus Four for use in Canada. If you're on Rogers, Telus, or Bell, um, there are some tweaks that have to be made. Um, there's a video that's posted that kind of walks you through some of the different settings that you need to do. Um, but you can adjust your phone and unlock LTE in Canada on the Nexus Four. It's so. not without a few pain points. True, <laughs> uh, definitely has a few pain points. So this, I mean. Uh, oh. Basically, what this stems back to is sometime last week, people started to realize that there was this dormant LTE chip in the underlying uh, kind of hardware inside the Nexus 4. And so suddenly people are like, well, maybe we can just hack our phone and turn LTE on and magically it'll work with all the LTE. And then a lot of people are saying, no, you can't do that. And then, of course, it came out that you actually can in Canada. But it's obviously something that wasn't, you know, it was never intended to be. Uh, lit up uh, yeah. within well, the device. Well, just just to give a sense, let's, it's 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 just six quick steps, and we'll just walk through them real quickly. <laughs> um, <laughs> go for it. So if you go in your if you go into the settings, um, more than mobile networks and access point names, you can enter in the access point name for either Rogers, Telus, or Bell. Um, and if you're using um, Telus or Bell, you can use the same access point name that was in when you put your SIM card in. So that's it. So once you do that, then you go to your phone, and in the dialer, you enter. Asterisk, pound, asterisk, pound, 4636, pound, asterisk, pound, asterisk. Got that. Um, and then you tap on phone information and then set preferred network type, and then you can choose LTE. I've been typing that into every Android phone I own. It, it just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's good it's to weird. see that this trick finally works. <laughs> yeah, finally. You know? <laughs> down, 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 left, right, left, right. <laughs> totally. Well, okay, so once you do this... Um, the phone actually reverts back to no, WCDMA that, yeah. preferred uh, when you reboot. So you have to remember to uh, make the switch again. You don't have to go through this whole process, I don't think, or do you? you if you do, that's uber lame. Yep. Uh, and then uh, apparently Google Now doesn't work when you're connected to LTE. This is by no means a solution that this most people are going to be like, this yeah, is, this is yeah. a, oh, wow, isn't it interesting? We actually got it to work type thing. Yeah. Somebody's going to do this daily and be cool with it. Most people are not. 
This is a carrier's nightmare because when you start using yeah. bands for protocols that weren't designed for that, when you start yeah. activating parts of the phone that are dormant for a reason, maybe they don't have the cut filters yeah. to prevent them from interfering with other frequencies, that's when uh, you know you can destroy a, a carrier's real estate, their entire yep. spectrum, with a couple of thousand phones that are using this this well, little hack. And that, and that's a, and that's a interesting point because the the next story I want to talk about is one that I, I'm going to freely admit is now getting to the periphery of my knowledge and ability to comprehend. But uh, the Nexus Four also it was revealed includes support for LTE on Band Four, uh, AWS. Um, and there's a great post on Anantech. I can never pronounce that. Anantech. Um, about how you can switch over what band it's broadcasting on. Apparently, it defaults the the broadcast band one or two, but uh, bro- uh, band four is at a higher uh, is at a different megahertz, you know, spectrum type thing, um, and you're able to change it. But again, very technical. Is it intended on the carrier? Is the carrier forcing it to bands for a reason? You know, like, and once you start kind of hacking with this stuff, it, it you you put into question whether the phone is operating as it's meant to be. Mm-hmm. You know, because the carriers go through a lot of work to make sure the the capacity is there and the phones all can work. And you know, so, and this one I was reading this one and my head started to hurt. But <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting. I'm sure at some point there will be an OTA rolled out that'll just yeah. like disable it completely, except for you know anybody. <laughs> Hacking their phone, you know, with a, with a ROM of some sort, then the ROMers will probably find their way well, around. The thing, it, the but. hackers will always be there. I mean, like, I mean, it goes back, you know, like, you know, overclock, overclocking computers yeah. and unlocking, you know, parts of the operating system that weren't meant to be and stuff like that. It's always going to happen. It's just whether yeah. or not. You know. I, I, I like stories like this though because yes, the hackers are always going to be there, and definitely Android kind of courts the hackers. Yeah. We want the hacker crowd. We want the geek crowd. But the question is. Now that we've kind of grown up and we've got an operating system that is fantastic and that works for hackers and for regular consumers alike, can we be responsible enough to hack our devices but not do things that are going to disrupt the game for everybody else? Right? Yeah, good that's, point. That's what it comes down yeah. to ultimately. Good point. Yeah, I mean I could turn my phone into a jammer if I wanted to, Yeah, but exactly. I probably shouldn't. Yeah. What you mean, like play like really loud rock music? Well, no, I mean what I used to do is oh. I, I actually I created a device <laughs> when I was giving homilies in Hawaii, very small parish that would, when activated, nice knock people off their cell phone, awesome. so I wouldn't get ringing and and but it, it showed it, <laughs> it, it looked like they had full bars, yeah, but they just would not get any data or any calls. Awesome, That's awesome. Uh, you should, but see. <laughs> That's a hack, and it was fun, but you really shouldn't do yeah, that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you really, really well, shouldn't. <laughs> well, I mean, I could see movie theaters. I could see, did you, you use it in the movie theater? Did you use it in the I, movie I, No, I've never used it in public. You see, you, <laughs> all right, there you go. See, see, I was going to say, oh, look, the priest is such a better person than me, but I, I see the, the, the shifty eyes. <laughs> have, you, have you ever been on a, on a BART train with someone who's having a, an obnoxiously loud conversation oh. on a phone? Mm. I will admit, maybe once it accidentally turned on. I'd, Oops. Oops. That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> that is pretty awesome. Uh, do you happen to have an, an awesome device with you right I now? I do. I have this. This is a Galaxy Note 2. Ooh. This is the LTE edition. So the international edition has been available for, for some time. This uh, we, we reviewed on Before You Buy today. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we found was this is just every bit the phone that uh, the, the Galaxy Note 2 international was. It's fast. It's, I mean, have, you, have you played with this thing? The phablet? No, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, it is large. It's 5.5 inches. It's slightly lower resolution than the, uh, the Note uh, 1. So the Note 1 was 1280 by 800. This is 1280 by 720. But it uses an HD Super AMOLED screen instead of that pentile screen. So it doesn't feel blue. I mean, if you yeah. look, the, the colors are really right. warm. It's really vibrant. Yep. The, the motion is smooth. Uh, and one of my favorite uh, features about this is, you know how if you're, looking at your phone in bed and you get that annoying, it keeps rotating because yeah. you, you're on side. Yeah, yeah. This actually does face detection. It knows which way your face That's is. That's the Samsung stuff, though, right? Right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so if you're lying in your bed, it'll actually yeah. keep oriented so you can continue to read even when you're lying down. Uh, it's, it's, I also found that uh, the, uh, the, just the extra screen real estate allows for multi-windowed applications, uh, unlike any, any phone that you're going to find. Here's the issue I've had with that, and that is it's operating on Sprint's LTE service because it is an LTE phone, and Sprint's LTE service is absolutely horrid. It, it is, it's ridiculously bad, and it's not just that it's bad. It's that there are spots of LTE, and right now LTE devices don't have a really good way to hand up and down. 
So if you are on a call on an LTE service and you you go into an area that's switching you back down to CDMA, it will drop the call. And the same thing with the data stream. Versus this, my Nexus, which is on an HSPA Plus service, that will actually make the transition back and forth, back and forth. Now, uh, the reason why we're bringing this up is because, uh, well, Samsung announced that they they sold almost, is it uh, double what they sold the first day of, of the uh, Samsung Note 2 sales. They're up to almost 6 million right now. That, now, that's not much compared to the 20 million that we've got of the Galaxy S3 over 100 days. But for a phone that uh, just a while ago in this program, it was sort of a game to find one of these in the wild. Yep. That's, that's amazing. I mean, people yeah. are finally realizing that this is not a joke. I mean, it, it does feel nice well, and it does offer functionality you can't get on another phone. I'm fascinated by the amount of marketing that Samsung's putting at it. I mean, I know we've been talking a lot about Samsung's aggressive marketing and the, uh, the Galaxy S3 and stuff like that, but, you know, walking around San Francisco, getting on Muni and getting on BART, there are big old Note 2 ads, and in New York City, there are, there are buses, uh, signs on buses about the Galaxy Note 2 and the next big thing and all that sort of, you know, I'm, you know, they're pushing it, and I guess it's working. So. And this is, this is the only con I could think up once you start using this phone and i have to send this back this was a review unit so mm-hmm. this is gone now i used to think this screen was big <laughs> yep. and now i'm looking at the screen i'm going wah, wah. It, it, <laughs> the that's screen size screen gap is widening the, right, yeah right. no i mean it's this it was the same for you know if if i go from this and then go back to my original motorola droid you can't do it it's like how did i how did i last how did oh, i last oh. that long on such a small it's screen like you don't know ne- what you know yeah, when I found my it. Nexus S, like we yeah. talked about this before, I, I was pulling pictures off my Nexus S, and and it's tiny in my hand compared to this. And I remember that was huge when I, when that came out. I'm like, oh, this phone's enormous. You can yeah. never go back. <laughs> no. and, and you know it, things like this, like uh, you know, this is something that Samsung does. It's got these removable back covers, right? So the the, the standard one is just a back cover, but mm-hmm. you can also buy these little accessory kits that that have the back cover plus a front cover. Yeah. So you can, in essence, put this into a case without having the added weight or size. Yeah, of yeah like I'm a not case. I'm a, I don't use cases. Guy, right. like, yeah, so like that's actually really interesting that it's this integrated cool, in there. Right? Yeah, it protects the screen yeah. and it's, mm-hmm. yeah. it's quite nice. The, the stylus is, uh, for me, it's still kind of gimmicky. There are very few times I actually used the yeah. stylus, but it's, it's nice that it's there. I, I let my dad play with this for a week and he was using the stylus all the time because he, the last smartphone he had was a trail. So that, that's what mm-hmm. he remembers. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I'm looking at something like this, I'm wondering, you know, we've, we're seeing size inflation. Even Apple, uh, which doesn't react to the market, they're making their screen bigger and everyone's touting it as the, you know, this is the greatest thing ever. Right. So are these just going to get larger and larger and larger? I mean, people thought the Note well, 1 was big. Well, the, the this thing is, is but what's the, but what's the di- we talked about this before on the show, but what's the difference between that at five inches and my Nexus 7 at seven inches? I mean, like, mm-hmm. I mean, hold them next to each other. Like, it can only go to six inches or so. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it can only go, go that much bigger at some point before they add a phone to this and I'm walking around going like that, you know? Which, and people used to think, oh, this is ridiculous. I'm walking around with this. Right. That's, that's, not, that's not that ridiculous. This is not that ridiculous yeah, anymore. Yeah. People get used to it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. What's funny is that, like, our whole our whole um, society has gone so, like, micro, smaller, smaller, but now we're having, like, a reaction. We're going bigger, bigger. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. wait a minute, it's more use, usable yeah. uh, if it's a little bit bigger. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I've been spending some time with a, well, it's kind of not in the same category as the uh, Galaxy Note 2. Uh, it's the LG Spectrum 2, and it's totally, um, you know, it's it's a 4.7-inch screen, so I guess it's really marginally smaller, but actually... Yeah, when when we can say a 4.7-inch screen is small, yeah. uh, you know that the paradigm <laughs> is small shifted. in this conversation. <laughs> Look at that. Look at it. That's crazy. And I want, to compare, I want to compare it to the Nexus, too. There we go. This is the yeah. LG yeah. Spectrum. And, and, you know, just for fun, get an iPhone out here, and yeah, you can right. fit it in the pocket. No, <laughs> iPhones... I, 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 somebody hands me their iPhone, and I'm like, this is like a toy. I'm like, how do you use this? Right. It's so small. It's yeah, Anyway, so... Yeah. Right. Uh, but the LG Spectrum 2, it's 100 bucks on Verizon with the two-year contract. And, uh, you know, so it's kind of solidly in that mid-range phone category. And as far as, uh, you know, operating in that category, it's awesome. It actually really impressed me. I think the things that didn't impress me so much about it is just kind of the hard edges around it can be kind of uncomfortable if you catch it at the wrong place. And uh, see the back of it? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's got kind of a so- a little bit of a soft touch back there. Uh, some think it's nice, some think it's a little cheap feeling, but... 
you know, it doesn't get all glossy and smudgy. So. I was trying to play. I was. I've been catching up on Gossip Girl this season. I was trying to play Spot the Android Phone because they're they're sponsored by Verizon or whoever it is. Oh, I think okay. one of the characters had this phone. Okay, um, yeah, because it because I recognize the the tops, the edges. And yep. it, yeah. What's interesting to me is it's very. I mean, the size of the device is actually pretty much the same as the Galaxy Nexus, yeah. but it actually feels bigger when you have it in your hand, just based on the fact. That the edges are squared. Just based on that fact alone, mm -hmm. you, I feel a big difference using this versus using this. Uh, this just feels a little bit more uh, ergodynamic, you know, uh, er ergodynamic uh, versus this one that I feel like I'm, I'm kind of reaching and, and everything like that. But otherwise, I mean, the processor's great. Uh, it's a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4. So it's, you know, very fast and responsive, especially for a mid range phone. Wasn't too fond of the camera, but otherwise, very stoked on this uh, phone. So, if 100 bucks is what you have, and Verizon is your carrier, I'm 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 all for it. LG Spectrum too. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that I really love about the Android ecosystem, which is you can look at a mid range phone and you can look at one of these higher higher range phones and you you see what it's aimed for. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you not a Note is not for everybody, but there are some people who will absolutely love the functionality you can get on this that you can't get on a mid range phone or even another high end phone, and I, I like that spectrum to be able to, to put three phones right next to each other and say, yeah, they're all using the same operating system, but they serve different markets. Because yep. as a technologist, that's exciting for me. Uh, one size does not fit all. I totally got two words jumbled there. Ergo dynamic. <laughs> that might be a new, uh, that's definitely a new word. It's certainly not the word I was trying to say. Is that a show title? Is that possibly? <laughs> well, we'll put it up there, the, the possibilities. Uh, I don't even know how to spell that. That's how much it is into word. Uh, anyways, okay, cool. cool. Well, there um, we go. Yeah, well, before we go to an email, uh, one thing I totally spaced on when we're talking about Android 4.2, remember a couple weeks ago I was um, I was having some complaints or worries about the widgets on the on the lock screen and how would that work with security and would you be able to use it? After uh -huh. having for a week now, yeah. they got it right. They totally got it right. Oh, so Because okay. I'm someone, I use the I use the lock, I, not just lock, but I use like the, the finger like to connect the dots for yep. security. And while I can see my messages and I can access the phone or go to Google mm. Now, if I try to go to those apps or, or interact with it, <clears throat> it makes me unlock. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So like, so here, if I want to go to text, it, it brings up a, a overshadow. Yeah, you see that there. So that's the messages which is behind there, and I've got to do my I've got to do my unlock you know pattern uh -huh. to, to do it. So okay, and it uh, kind of fuzzes it out. Yeah, so it kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah you can exactly. Still read it a little bit. Yeah, but, but still, but I can't interact. You somebody right. can't interact with it. So right. Um, anyway, I thought that was I just remembered that. So cool. Yeah. Cool. So onto an email. Uh, Peter writes in and says, "Hey guys, I really like the show and listen almost every week. Thank you, Peter. We appreciate it. I'm looking for a re recommendation for an Android tablet for my parents." They are older and never had a tablet or smartphone before and are now interested. Oh, how apropos mm, of this conversation. Mm, mm. Almost as if we planned it. Um, never. <laughs> so they're interested. So I'm potentially looking at an Android tablet as a gift. I hope they don't watch the show. They would use it primarily for email. He specifies AOL email and web browsing. <laughs> However, one factor in the choice from my perspective is that I will be remote technical support. They live about three hours away from me. I have a Galaxy Tab 10.1, so I'm thinking about a Galaxy Tab 2 10.1 for them. That way, hopefully, I can recreate most issues they have on my tablet. Also, there seems to be fa some fairly good prices now. However, I'm a little concerned that the Galaxy Tab 2 10.1 hardware is getting dated by this point. Does it make sense to buy at this point, or would it make sense to look for something newer? Thanks. Um, good question. I lean at the Nexus 10. I mean, I, I understand you're you wanting to be able to recreate their kind of scenario. Yeah, but how important? Yeah, how important to that is that? And really, yeah. yeah, and it also really depends on just how familiar how familiar you are with the Android platform. If you're familiar enough to kind of walk yourself through it, I don't think the ten's going to be so detached that you'd have a hard time walking them through whatever trouble they get into on their tablet. I, I understand the desire to want to be able to recreate any problem. I mean, yeah. that's that's the IT. Yeah. Yeah. Goal. You, you got to be able to sort of recreate the problem so you can recreate an answer. But when you use a more popular product like the Nexus, then you also get the the help of the all the interwebs. If it's a much more popular product, there's probably many more people who have run into that particular problem and can give you a simple yep. solution. Exactly. So uh, yeah, I, I think yeah, you may not be able to recreate 
exactly, but you can find out enough information from enough people to make it worth your while to go with the more popular products plus, now. Mm-hmm. Plus also, and, and, I, and as someone who's done tech support for the, his mother over the phone or over email and stuff like that, the, the tech support nightmares you have with a desktop computer are way less than you'd have with a tablet. Yeah. A tablet is pretty in your face and kind of easy, you know? So I, I mean, yeah. I would say if you can get your hands on it, I would say the Nexus 10. That's what I've been recommending this holiday season. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, and it really sounds like this is about the price range that you're looking at is the yeah. four to $500 price range for a tablet, which yeah. uh, go your parents, they're, yeah. they're stoked. Awesome. Um, the Nexus 10 16 gig is only $399, probably less, well, well probably about on yeah. par with, with what you were thinking. So uh, yeah, I would agree. Go that way. All right, let's dive into apps. You go. No, I am. <laughs> oh, yes, right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> so, no, no, I mean, I mean, oh, I, I planned it that way. Uh, yeah. So, uh, sorry. Now you funny. heard about the. <laughs> Uh, we said. I'm realizing I didn't have the conversation with you before the show, <laughs> halfway through the show. Hey, would you like to present some things? So this is totally my Cla- fault. My classic Jason. That's classic Jason. That's a good one. I just assumed. I put your initials in there and forgot to Don't tell you. Don't you know that's how we do the show? <laughs> that's how we roll. This is how I dictate. So, so you know that there's been a problem for a while with the Facebook app on Android. It's, it's kind of junk. I mean, even when you can get the functionality out of it that you want, which is not not often it's crashy it's buggy oh, so and, yeah, yeah it's, that's it's, pretty everyone's pretty looking cool. for a third party so facebook has figured out that the best way to get their developers to create better apps is to make them actually use android devices you know if, if your android developer is using an iphone and only an iphone he or she's not going to really care at the end of the day because he's not affected by his or her work so they've got a new campaign of uh, droid fooding They've got these posters all over the Facebook campus yep. that uh, are essentially saying, look, if you're, if you're coding for Android, we'd like you to use an Android phone. Now, it's been reported that although they're not ready to give up their iPhones, uh, there's many more people walking around with both devices, which I, which I think is that's what you want, right? That should be. I mean, I mean, honestly, I think this is the way to go. If you're developing, I, I question people who are de- designing and developing for a platform and not actively playing in it. You know, um, and not actively using it. I think this is a great. It's a great management maneuver by them. We'll see if it works. I mean, the, a similar thing happened at Google, right? I mean, that's. That's. I mean, remember when we started seeing the Nexus One? Friends of mine who worked at Google, they had this weird phone with a with a QR code on the back, and like Google made a game out of it with their employees, and they, mm-hmm. they you know, and that got them to to move over from iPhone. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I think it's it's a it's an idea whose time has come at Facebook because they have had such a a culture of. Uh, of isolation, uh, yeah. you know, it, it goes way back to, uh, you know, Mark saying, "Well, the, the iPad's not a mobile device. That's why we're not devi- designing a, an app for it." Um, and, and it just kind of continues. Facebook would like everyone to use their applications and their mobile devices the way Facebook would like to use it. I think this is an acknowledgement of, no, 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 we've got a code for the way people actually want to yep. use their devices. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. No. That's the only way you're going to know how to improve that app because that app needs a lot of sure. improvement. Oh, it needs a lot of love. <laughs> I mean, it's, me it speaks you. volumes that I have it on my phone and I go to the web and use the web right. version. Right. I mean, that, yeah. that speaks volumes. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, um, so uh, continuing with our theme of Google and things, uh, different services of Google connecting to one another, uh, there was a recent change in the Google Play Store specifically around user reviews. You used to be able to leave a review of an app or something, you used to be able to leave it anonymously. Um, no longer, Google has now uh, connected the review system in the Google Play Store to your Google Plus account. So all reviews are going to have an identity next to them, and I think that's great. Good. That's, yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there's nothing negative that I can say about this. I think this is awesome. Well, yeah. There are people who are decrying this, saying, oh, well, you know, what about what about this is censorship, or this is this is the restriction of free speech? I'm saying, no, no, no it's not. It's because not. Just don't leave a review. Exactly. We've seen yeah. it time and time again, where allowing that level of anonymity, yeah. especially on something well, like this, you're just inviting here's, here's my Here's my whole thing, is that is that with, in social media, and in comments, and in chat rooms, and things like this, it's so easy to put in a dumb, fake name, and say whatever you want, and hide behind the keyboard, and hide behind that. When you put your name up against it, you put your identity identity up against it. I take the approach of anything I say online or on these shows, anything like that, or, or on Twitter or on Facebook, I would say to the person I was talking to, I would say to you guys, anything I post, right. because you need to be accountable for what you say. And anybody who isn't, um, who doesn't want, who doesn't want that accountability, then you don't deserve the, per- like you shouldn't be doing it then. 
Right. You know, you're mm-hmm. trolling. Yeah. You know, so it, it comes down to the look. If if you don't want to give me your actual name, if you don't want to attach something to it, so I know that you've invested in this this comment, I don't want to read it. Right. Exactly. Yep. So yep. so good job, Google. I'm all about that. That's Agreed. Yeah. Very very cool. All right. Let's jump into the arena. Woohoo! To enter, one lives the Android Arena. So can I get a rule clarification? We never talked. Now that Eileen is gone, do we have, yeah. we have we just eliminated her arena wins, or do we do we spread them out amongst ourselves, or, <laughs> or how does that they're, them. They're negated? I don't know. She you know, I, a I think that they live in perpetuity yeah. at All least right. until the end of the year. She couldn't have left in March. And give, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. She had to wait until the end of the year. I think they at least last until the end of the year, and then we can compare <laughs> the year's worth of yeah. wins. Yeah. And uh, then you know, next year starts a new year. Yep. If she comes on as a guest, yeah. She'll be counted in the guest category. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> well, let's see. She comes on a guest before the end of the year. Would it count to her total? I guess it has to count to her total. Yeah. Anyway. All yeah, right, so. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely would. All right. So last week, uh, we had a few apps. Um, Oregon Trail, Screen Standby, Snapchat. Wow. This changed actually last Got that. When I checked this, uh, I think it was yesterday. Look at screen that. standby, one vote. yeah, was well. You know, ahead. I haven't voted yet. Hold up, by one mm. by one vote by Oregon one Trail. vote, mm. and I get it. I see. I see. Wait a minute. Nobody oh. likes sex. Okay, <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> Whatevs. Interesting discrepancy. Um, okay, just well keep then, my th- innovative apps to myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, it was close. It was close it in was the close. running. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Oregon Trail for first place apparently with thirty six percent of the votes. Screen Standby second place with thirty. Wait a minute! Oh, two more just came in. Oh, it was Oregon Trail. Yes. No, it was Oregon Trail. Oh. Yeah, just, that's just a chat room. Yeah. Chat room, cut it They're out. Messing yeah. with me. You said All right, we'll go with the original 37. screenshot. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to think about this one. Screen Standby. The whole system falling apart. Sna- it's all Snapchat. falling apart. It's all. <laughs> Down is oh, up, man. up is down, black is white, left is right. Keep the integrity of the living together. together. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, so we have three new apps for this week, starting with Ron. All right. So um, I keep going back to the fact that Eileen is gone, but now that Eileen is gone, I feel as if someone needs to carry the flag of photography apps. Okay, good. And I, it, that's me this week. I don't know if it's going to be me every week, but that's me this week. Um, you might remember, jeez, uh, I don't remember. It had to have been in, within the past year. Um, one of us, I think probably Eileen, did Pixel or Matic, um, mm-hmm. which was Autodesk, who's you know most popularly known as from CAD. Um, they came out with a photo app, which is kind of random and it was really kind of cool looking. Um, well, I thought it was really interesting to see that they've released a new app, and I've got it here on my tablet. It works on both phone and tablet, and it's called Pixlr Express. Um, and it is yet again another free app uh, from Autodesk. It's free in the Google Play Store, and uh, you basically what you can do with it is. Um, it's a great way to edit your photos. A lot of people, um, you know, love to take photos on their phones and their tablets and all the filters and all the adjustments and things like that. And there are all these different ways to mess with your photos or change them. Pixlr, Pixlr Express is another really pretty app from Autodesk. Like, I wonder what is Autodesk doing? Is there some, is there just like three dudes who are really into Android at Autodesk and are like, oh, let us make apps. And they're like, yeah, just do whatever you want. <laughs> um, so check it out. I mean, this is really cool. So I got it here on my tablet. So. Oh. We're going to listen to some music as I do it now. Um, so just launching it, you could just see – oh, wait. Oh, crap. Ah. You can just see from the get-go it's not taking any of the Android OS uh, suggestions. It's not using any of the Jelly Bean kind of uh, menu items or display or anything like that. It's got its, it's totally own uh, look and feel to it. But it's really pretty. It's really nice. So when you open it up, you can either take a photo or you can choose a photo from your library – um, in this particular case, because I don't have the front facing camera on the Nexus 7, I'm going to choose a photo from my library, but it would just, you know, if you have it on your phone with a better camera, you could take a picture from the app. Um, so I'm going to choose a photo. It pulls up your gallery and just shows you all the random, you know, photos on your SD card. I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick a photo here and I'll take this picture of, um, I'll take this picture of Disney world that I took this summer on vacation. And so here's the photo. And what you've got is you've got a really easy to use UI. Um, up here, you can just close the photo or you can save it. Um, down here are your, your actions, and you can make adjustments. You can apply an effect. You can put an overlay on, or you can add a border. So I'm going to go through them all. Um, just under the adjustments, it kind of spills out in these tiles, 
and you can add a color splash, you can sharpen, you can denoise, you can do red eye uh, red eye removal, you can change the color, change the contrast, add blur, um, rotate, crop, all those kind of photo editing tools that you might want to do. In this particular case, I'm going to um, I'm going to let's say adjust the color, and once you choose one, it gives you the different settings for each one. And so here I'm going to choose hue, and it gives me a slider, and so I can change the hue of the photo. You know, I can change the lightness here. Add some saturation. Take away some saturation, and hit apply. Pretty cool. Mm. I can add in some blur, and so you can blur the entire photo if you want, and it'll work and do it. Very some mm. real advanced um, photo uh, manipulation stuff. Um, under effects, everybody loves the effects. Um, they've got a whole bunch of different categories of effects. So here they've got vintage, creative, default, soft, subtle, too old, unicolor. So we'll go vintage. And then within within each effect, there are different filters within the effect, similar to Instagram and things like mm -hmm. that. So I can choose one. It can kind of give you kind of auto settings, you know. Um, so once I find one I like, I'll choose it and just hit apply, and it applies it. Then you can add an overlay, and there's a whole bunch of different overlays you can add. You can add, you know, kind of little vignette, you know, kind of um, uh, shadow around it. You can add that kind of retro poster one, which I really like, where you can add this this beam, and it kind of puts out those lines around it. So really cool little editing. Um, you can do a gritty version of that. Um, really neat little filters you can put in. So I'm going to apply that. And then you can change and add a border. So I'm going to add a grunge border because Lord, Lord knows we all love our grunge borders. And there are different ones you can choose from. And you can even choose – you can even set as a favorite, which I think is a neat little way. Um, you can so, set a particular setting to yep, a favorite? Exactly, oh, okay. yeah. So if there's one – there's a frame you often use. You just right. save it as your favorite. Um, and then once it's done, um, you close that. There's the final photo. And up here, it keeps track of what you're doing, and you can, you can undo and redo stuff. So nice. let's say, oh, I want to change that frame, and I want to get rid of that effect – Oh, no, I want to bring back the effect. I can take it away, you know. And then once it's done and ready, you can hit save, and you can either save it to the gallery or you can share it. And once you hit share, it ties into – you choose the size of the photo you want to do. I'll do a medium one depending on the size – you know, the K size of the photo. And then it just pulls into the um, into the Android uh, share functionality, and you can choose what app you want to share it to, um, you know, whether I want to post it to Facebook or Google Plus or Twitter or whatnot. Um so a really, really interesting uh, photo app, again, from Autodesk. Uh, very similar to Pixelmatic. It's using, I can see, this is almost like the next generation of Pixelmatic, um, Pixel Express, a little more powerful, but it's totally free. And if you're somebody who likes to mess with photos and, you know, do all the photo editing, it's, 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 it's pretty neat. Nice. So, yeah. And pretty beautiful, too. So Yeah, some, yeah. Of, some of that, uh, that imagery just it made it pop. I yeah, like yeah, that. exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm, I'm a bad photographer. So anything I can do to make my pictures look better, I'm all about. So, nice. Yeah. So. Nice. Cool. Yeah, and a lot of really good reviews. Um, yeah. It's just quality. Job. It's just a high-quality <laughs> app. I mean, I, I really want to – I would love to talk to someone at Autodesk to be like, them doing CAD makes sense, and, and they do Sketchbook and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Sketchbook but, is great. But these apps make no sense. Is that it's a free like, app? It's free. Oh, it's totally free. Nice. So, okay. yeah. Cool. Excellent. That is Pixlr Express, P-I-X-L-R Express. Yep. Awesome. Good pick. What you got? All right, so you're prepared I, for it this time because I, you I'm actually prepared. knew that this I know, is. I, I knew. I, mean, that, I actually yeah, told you this was yeah. coming up. Now, last time uh, I was on all about Android, I had an app that uh, had a little bit of fraudulent voting. We're not going to do that uh -huh. this time, right? Right, Chat Realm. Okay, we're going to be totally honest. <laughs> but I, I want to show off an app that this is not new. This has been around pretty much since the start of the Android ecosystem. But surprisingly, a lot of people don't have this on their phones, and I just I, I'm blown away. It's called Wi-Fi Analyzer, and if Chad shows you the screen here. You can see what it does. It, it uses the internal radio of your Android device, and it shows you what the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi spectrum looks like. The reason why this is important is because if you've ever been in a crowded space and you're trying to figure out why your Wi-Fi is not working, or if you're, you're trying to make Wi-Fi work at home and you can't figure out why you're always getting interference, this actually lets you see what's sitting on top of your bands. Now, this is the 2.4 gigahertz range, which means there's really only three channels, and it gives you a visual representation. There's channel 1, channel 6, and channel 11. And those curves above them show you, uh, well, pretty much where all the RF energy is going within that band. As you can see, that two-wire one, that, that purplish one, it's, it's straddling bands because someone thought they'd be cute and uh, make it channel 3. 
what that does is it actually messes up channel one and channel six. So, you know, this is one of those things where it actually gives you a visual representation of something you can't see. Something else I, I think you should uh, is interesting is if you switch this over to the 5 gigahertz range, you understand why people are always saying you should go with 802.11a or uh, G that, oh, uh, N that uses the, the 5 gigahertz or Wi-Fi because all this space is empty. Mm -hmm. This range is almost always empty, and that means that if you're operating in, in 5 gigahertz, your signal is going to work much better. You're going to have a lot less congestion. You're going to get better throughput. Now, that's, that's not all. It lets you do uh, a couple of other modes. This one's one of my favorites. Um, I designed a uh, aluminum reflector that I could set my phone in, and it acts like a signal detector. So I could choose a particular signal. I can, I, I can tap and then figure out like, which of these I'm trying to find. Let's say there's a rogue AP somewhere, and I, I want to find out where this guest one is. And as I rotate the phone... Uh, it won't do it so much right now because I don't have the reflector. But that signal meter would go up and down. So I, it's, it's like direction finding to, to look for a rogue access point. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, the, the application also lets you see all the different access points that are running in your area. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of these applications that it's, since it's free, you should have it on your phone just to be able to diagnose what's going on with your Wi-Fi. If it looks like this... It means, yeah, the wireless is really congested, and that explains what's going on. Uh, so this is Wi-Fi Analyzer, free, and um, if you don't have it on your phone, you, you really should. That's, That's super cool, cool to yeah. kind of get the visual representation. I had never heard of this, uh, this app. Uh, a few people in the chat room are like, oh, yeah, this is, this is an old school app, yeah, it's but, old school. I, but it's a great app. Yeah, it does it well, right? Yeah, yeah it does yeah. it really well. I just had never heard about it. In a place like uh, the Twit Studio, it's actually very interesting to see it because oh, yeah. we have a lot of wireless stuff going on here. So you actually get more than just a single you know, yeah, thing well, appearing. If you ever screen. wonder why like the guest network here at Twit is always falling down, it's because mm -hmm. there's so many access points in this area, yeah. and they're all competing for that same space. It's a perfect storm, yeah. right? Uh, right, yeah, right, yeah. right, yeah. right. Awesome. Well, that is, uh, what is it? It's Wi-Fi Analyzer, this time with a Z instead of an S. If you remember a few I do. weeks back, <laughs> Analyzer. The correct way. The correct way. Uh, the correct way. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you my app. And this actually came in really, I wish I was reviewing this app last week because it came in really handy for me over the weekend. And I don't know how I'd never heard of it before because it's really it's it's got a good, nice design to it, and it's actually very helpful. Um, in the past, we've uh, we've talked about what was the server? It was uh, App Watch. That was a web service that some one of our fans created, and then later somebody went in and created an Android app around it, right? And basically, the the thought on here was. You want to track an app, but you don't want to install it on your phone. So you do a search through App Watch. It'll add it to your list. And then anytime that app you know, has an update or goes on sale, you'll get notified on your phone. Well, if you don't want to place specific apps onto a list and you just want to have a general idea of when apps go on sale, use App Sale. That's the app that I'm reviewing. So I'll go ahead and launch it here. And we'll go right up there. It's refreshing the sales. So basically what this does is you can set parameters. I'll go into settings and I'll say, you know, my filter is what is the minimum discount that I want uh, before it actually appears for me. And also I can set kind of the popularity level of the particular app right now. I have it set for minimum downloads of a thousand. So only apps that have a thousand or more downloads will actually appear uh, in in my uh, selection here, you can you can narrow it down to a number of categories. If I went into apps, I could narrow it down to a number of things that I'm interested in. Right now, I have it set fully. I can change notifications to different intervals and base. And this works really well. Every day I get, uh, I just set it to twelve, but I had it set to four. But every day I would get one to two notifications that would say these two apps just went on sale uh, and are actually on sale at a discounted price. So it was really handy and it for and it totally triggered me to check it throughout the day, which is kind of what you're looking for when it's an app like this that's all about app discovery. You want it to kind of tickle that kind of, you know, that kind of idea that, oh, I want to check for something new because I'm excited to see what is on sale. It does it really well. So I'll go ahead and show you right here. The The design of it is uh, pretty, pretty good. I mean, it's, you know, it has some of the touchstones of the Holo um, kind of design aesthetic, but it's not fully Holo, I wouldn't say. But it's uh, pretty easy to use. It's kind of hard because it's on... Uh, yeah, I guess it's forced on uh, landscape right now, so you don't. The MHN. MHN okay, yeah. if I could swap that, I would. But 
Anyways, I normally use it in portrait. But what you can see here is, for example, today, Seton Companion Media Center is now on sale, 40% off, down from $4.99 to $2.99. I can click through, and it'll give me you know, all the information from the Play Store, some extras, kind of a chart showing you what price it's been at, where it's at now. And uh, if you actually want to add it to some sort of a watch list, there's a little button right here that'll add it to a watch list. So even if it isn't included or you want to keep track of it, you can hit that. And now I'm watching it in my watch list. And if it comes up, you know, I, I can uh, see that for sure later. If I actually wanted it, I could just click the get it for, and that'll take you actually through to the Play Store where you can purchase it. And you can see right there, $2.99 for that app. Um, I'm kicking myself because I didn't jump on this, but uh, I was busy at the time that I saw it, and I just didn't didn't make the clicks down here. Where was it? This. Oh. Oh. Prove IP was down to two forty nine from four ninety nine. Fifty percent discount. This is an app that I keep meaning to get, and it's already expired, so I can't get it now for that discounted Ooh. price. Five bucks really isn't a lot anyways but anyways i could have got half off and had i just jumped on it i would have but um ultimately app sales is just a really easy way to keep track of sales on apps that might cost you know more than you're willing to spend i think right now if i scroll up beyond pod is discounted from 6.99 to dollar 99 Google Play, the Play Store might surface some of these, but some of these, a lot of these, and particularly over the weekend, over the Black Friday weekend and Cyber Monday, there were a lot of unadvertised sudden sales, apps that just went on sale for 24 hours and knocked half to two thirds of the price off. And if you knew about it, you would have jumped on it. But chances are you weren't searching at that time, so you didn't know about it. This is a great way to track those sales. Uh, it's called App Sales, and it's a great app. I, I'm definitely keeping it installed and uh, monitoring it regularly. This reminds me of that story I heard a while back about a, a guy who wrote a demon uh, that would look for cheap items on eBay and would send him one once a month. And he had a set of parameters for like it's, it's got to be less than a dollar and it's got to be free shipping. I, that's that's kind of like uh, I, I see you using it as as that. It's like a persistent presence of. Get me something interesting when the price becomes right. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. Like I'm not going. I, not not I, random. I, I spend a lot of money on apps actually for for this show particularly because we yep. you know we kind of have, have to. to. It's, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. A, an important part of the show. It's built into it. I also like to support developers right, and right. Uh, you know so I dropped fifteen dollars on the Chameleon Launcher. Like I I'm okay with dropping dollars on apps. Sometimes, though, an app isn't in its own uh, right and at that price compelling enough for me to drop, a, uh, drop the money on it. Groove IP, for example, has a very specific use case that I'm not necessarily in all the time. So right now, at this particular moment, I don't know if I'm willing to spend five bucks on it. If I were in a situation where I needed to use that at that particular moment, it suddenly Splurge. becomes much more valuable right. to me and I would drop five dollars on it. If it was discounted to 250 I might be more inclined to be like, you know what? I might need this. Whatever. Future. Yeah. Right. Right. It's worth it for two fifty. I'm sure I'm gonna get that kind of usage out of it eventually. And this is just a way to, to monitor for that. Now I want to point out that your app is the only one that costs money of, of any of the apps in the arena, but well, it's, it's you're free. Not, the app is free. The, oh, the, but yeah, wait. The app is free, but the, you pay for the apps. Oh, in that's the right. App. That's right. Right. That's right. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. The app is definitely free. Um, Jason found a loophole. Uh, yeah. A loophole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't call this a loophole. <laughs> no, just... I just call it awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there you go. Uh, app sales. Uh, and it saves you money. You like, yeah. yeah. You know, we all like we all like We all like a sale, right? <laughs> so this is just a way to monitor for it. Uh, all right. So there you have it. Three apps this week. Pixlr Express. Wi-Fi analyzer and app sales. Uh, why don't you vote and let us know which are your favorite, which is your favorite app this week. Go to AAAPoll.com slash 87, AAAPoll.com slash 87 and let us know which of these three apps is your favorite. Which one will you be installing? And it, it Mom, looks... I'm going to make my guess that the initial returns in the chat room will be Wi-Fi analyzer. But it's the, already up. The long game will be... Uh, Pixel Express. That's my guess. Well, because right now we're getting all the guys in the chat room. Exactly. And yeah, if they're in the yeah, chat room, yeah. they've got they're that hardcore. geeky, yeah, hardcore exactly. yeah. element. Mm -hmm. we've, we've seen that. The more casual viewer, the person who watches at Sunday night, 
you know, just takes it easy. They they, they so, go, they'll oh, surprise pictures. you. Yeah, yeah, they'll no. surprise you. I don't know. Wi Fi is pretty Wi-Fi far ahead out running, right yeah, now. Fifty eight percent, sixty percent is dominating. It's there's no question about now, it. Right last now, last time we oh, I was on, we had a total of like a thousand votes, which we never get, which I, which yeah. was weird. <laughs> I was like, oh wow, the, we either got, suddenly mm, got really popular, reson- or, resonated, or, yeah. mm. <laughs> and did you get an email from the straw poll people saying, yeah, we want to know how that happened? Because yes, that, they're not no, it was in Google Plus. It was a comment. It was like, yeah, we think that's weird too so they were kind of looking all right, it was it was go poll go that's right yeah that's it's right. not straw poll um all right awesome well that is it for this week's episode of all about android father robert balisere thank you once again for joining us always awesome to have you on thanks the show. for having me on it's always great to hang out in the brick house are you kidding me this is disneyland it is kind of a disneyland and not the sorts. kind of disneyland that ron would put all the rays on it's yeah it's, i got some good photos it's hard to pick one of these <laughs> there's also a photo on here of my of my family at the where was it at the um um Magic mgm Mountain? studio oh. no, like the mgm studios the, the fake lot and there was a san francisco spot Oh, oh really? Yeah, oh. and so it was. You very, could have broadcasted from there. I know. I should have thought yeah, you were back here. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to promote? You, you know, um, I, I really would like people to check out Twite. It's a show here on the Twit Network. We film every Monday. I've got this this uh, TD, this technical director, who is just fabulous, fantastic. He's he's he knows Man, his stuff. I hate stuff. that guy. I know. But uh, you know, we talk about enterprise tech, but it's not. To the level that if you don't work in IT, that you won't understand anything or you yeah. won't like it. We we really try to bring the knowledge to everyone. You know, if you've ever worried, wondered about how uh, networks are connected, if you've ever wondered about how the internet works, if you've ever wondered about how simple network technologies redefine our lives, why not give it a try? Come by Monday noon Pacific. Jump in the chat room and you'll be able to talk to everyone uh, who well is geeky and trolly all at the same time. Excellent. Yes, I will. I will uh, attest to the fact that uh, when I started this whole podcast craziness at ZDNet at, in CNET, uh, the podcasts there that were more enterprise level bored me to tears. <laughs> Twyatt does not. Twyatt actually, the, the, so much of the conversation, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like your uh, it's the, the, the big data conversation from yes. a couple episodes ago yes. scared the pants off of me. And that's what we do on Twyatt. <laughs> scare the pants <laughs> off of you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, I was sitting at the TD desk, so nobody knew. Your pants were scared. Yes, (laughs) they went away. Uh, I'm not wearing pants right now. (laughs) Well, you never do. Um, (laughs) Well, so here's that photo I was talking about. Here's what Disney thinks San Francisco looks like. You want to zoom in there? That's exactly. That's like it was kind of freaky. If San to turn, Francisco was created to, out of Legos, to turn the huh. no, but to turn the corner though and see those and see, signs, yeah, like actually, those yeah. were scarily accurate. Like those, yeah, like, no, those, that's the, not the, too the bad. Designs, the 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 fake background with the Golden Gate and Coit Tower all in the same shot that was a little more. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah that, okay, that doesn't work. Yeah, that doesn't work. I, I don't that know if that actually yeah. is possible. Yeah, no, it's but, not. Absolutely not. So that's that's Disney's representation of San Francisco. But anyway. Uh, find all my crap at about.me slash ronxo. You can go uh, find my Twitter and my Google Plus and Facebook and all fun stuff like that. And go to ifanboy.com if you like comic books. So, yeah. And go to chat if you like uh, uh, Minecraft. Minecraft. <laughs> I almost you, said Warcraft. <laughs> if you I like would totally, Pencil. by the way, I would, that conversation about your show would have been totally different if it was about Warcraft 3. That's all I'm saying. And, well, it would have been you. So one day after the show, we had a conversation about Minecraft. It would have been you explaining my, Warcraft to me because... Yeah. I never played it. Oh, Warcraft 3 was great, man. Yeah. You would have loved it. Yeah. So. yeah. Where can people find your stuff, Chad? Um, I do a show um, that records live here on the Twit uh, Network uh, at uh, 7 p.m. on Thursdays called OMG Craft. And you can go to omgcraft.com or .net uh, to check that stuff out. This week, we are going to cover all the stuff that happened at Minecon. Excellent. And you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Jason Howell or about.me slash Jason Howell. Quick thank you to the chat room and all the people that watch the show and email to us. You guys are awesome yep. and uh, really it. always appreciate your feedback and your input and your participation. So thank you for being awesome. Uh, and, can, you know, why don't you be more awesome and send us an email if you haven't already? AAA at twit.tv. You can send us a link to a video in that email, and we'll play the video on the show. We don't get many of those, so you'd stand out. Uh, Voicemail 347-SHOW-AAA. Leave us a voicemail. Uh, Find the show on Twitter. We are at Android Show. You can find the show on the site, as well as a wiki. There's a wiki there on our show page at twit.tv slash AAA. You can also find our episodes there. 
uh, iTunes, YouTube, all over the interwebs. And finally, you can catch us live every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, usually, at uh, live.twit.tv. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye-bye. Bye.